Your feet, I've been doing this for three years. I still do it. I'm a volunteer, so uh, and they think I'd learn, but no, no, not really. Um, uh, it was built as a Butterfield. Of course, back then it was uh, uh, steam powered, so it had a, a coal fired, steam powered. It had one propeller, and it came to its, in its first three years uh, ocean going uh, uh, a salvage tug and a radio vessel in Bermuda. All right, and that's where it went for the first three years. And then in 1922, it came to the Great Lakes, and in the Butterfield of the Purvis has been on the Great Lakes ever since except for three years during the Second World War when the Army commandeered it and took it to Alaska and, and where it supported the troops, U.S. troops station in the Aleutian Islands, right? Um, it's 149 feet long, 27 feet wide, draws 15 feet of water. So it came to Sturgeon Bay in 1957 when uh, a gentleman by the name of Captain John Roan, who owned a fleet of tugs here in Sturgeon Bay, uh, bought it from Consolidated Papers. Consolidated Paper Company had been using it to pull rafts of pulp logs across Lake Superior. And we'll have some pictures of that technique uh, uh, in, the, in the galley. But they, they pulled 10 to 14,000 pulp logs in a big boom across Lake Superior. Uh, but anyway, Captain Roan bought it. Part of the deal when he bought it was it would be converted from steam power to diesel. So they took that whole superstructure off. Right, replaced it. You'll see some pictures of it when it was a Butterfield. It was a little bit different, but they took it all off, replaced it with this, pulled the steam turbine, steam engine, all that out, dropped two big GM diesels in there that Captain Rowan supposedly got from landing craft tanks at the end of the Second World War. They are they were basically locomotive diesels that generate 900 horsepower each. He had them supercharged 1,200 horsepower. That made this the, probably the most powerful, not the fastest, but the most powerful tug on the Great Lakes at the time. Uh, it protected the cable from a brain, because if you lose a cable on this boat, it's the, one of the critical parts of operation, right? Now if you're doing a short run, a short tow, you take these yellow posts and drop them in here so your cable is, like if you're in a confined area like this, drop them in here and keep it under control. Here, pick that left one up and see it just what it's like. Here's our DC power drum winch. Here's our drum cable. You can see that we, they made a little chart here of the different lengths of the uh, run. This one is the two yellow marks of what, 200 feet, 150? 150. 150 feet, okay. Um, then we have the shackles that you'd be using here. Cord without one of that. These are serious shackles, right? Whatever it is you're towing, okay? We have lines for docking. Right, a spare lines for docking here. And then those lights that are up on the mast, these are them. So I always ask people, imagine climbing that mast with this boat rolling and swaying, and your job is to change out the colors of the, the lights. Because these colors indicate to other mariners that you're towing and what you have on their tow. So in the, uh, whatever it is you're towing, you're towing. Because a lot of times you're towing the boat, it's like there's two boats going on the other, right? Um, I'll tell you a quick story here. They had a situation once where this um, dog leg didn't, wasn't inserted properly because you'd have it popped in here when you're towing to keep this from unwinding. Well, it wasn't inserted properly and it was out of place. And so they started to lose cable. But the crew managed to figure out what was happening and they got it squared away before anything serious happened. After that, one of the crew members made this little alarm. It's basically a coat hanger device, okay? And it's designed so that these spokes in the winch drum here, if they move, this little alarm hits this thing, that's pretty loud, okay? But alerts the crew that something is moving back here and it shouldn't be moving. So it's just a little homemade device made by one of Captain Rose crew members. Spare components, 
their mountain along the hull. They carried spears and everything with them uh, wherever they went. You can look back here and you can see into the village and that, that opens so people can take a look at the village if they want it. And that is obviously the lowest part of the boat. It's where all the, any minor leaks, any condensation and stuff uh, ends up. And that's um, where the term, if you ever heard the term, tastes like bilge water. Well, that's where it comes from, from that, okay? This is the chief engineer station. Uh, these are, and these are engine telegraphs. Uh, do you want me to give you a quick rundown on how this work? Okay. There's a matching set up in the pilot house, exact matching set of these here, right? That actually, the person up in the pilot house doesn't really control the engines of this boat. Up there, uh, they have, they have, they'll have this here, and if they want to, let's, let's just say, uh, they, whoever's at the helm wants to go full speed on the starboard engine, right? So what happens up there, he takes this large lever and flips it over full speed. What happens down here is this little arrow, see that? Okay, that flips over to full down here, and <coughs> bells go off down here, very loud. You're gonna hear that. You see, look at that, say, oh, they want full speed, so you take this, you're gonna put the throttle forward to full, and you respond by taking your large lever down here and moving it over to where the little one is slipped. And then what happens up in the pilot house, where he's already had the large one over, the little one flips up, so they match up. So you always know that you've done what's been asked of or commanded uh, up in the pilot house. This has been all uh, cleaned up and, and uh, renovated, but you can imagine back in the day, if you spent any time around diesel engines, this would have been dark and oily. You know, we have it all lit up and everything. Very noisy as well. These diesels are very noisy. So the guys had one of these here uh, so they could uh, communicate with each other when it got to on simple terms. When you go forward here, you'll see uh, there's a phone booth right here. And uh, when you stick your head in, let's move forward a little bit. If you stick your head in there and say, oh, uh, and you'll see why they had to do that because any noise down there would have been so bad you wouldn't be able to use the phone. So go ahead, stick your head in there, just say hello to take a and you'll see what it's like to see the, the, the noise. Uh, it was 15 guys and one woman. And the woman, her name was Sue Baston, and she did a lot of the detail painting. So when they were done, they made a little honorarium to her, Packer Pulitzer of course, uh, for Sue. Um, I'm going to show you a couple pictures here. This is what the boat looked like when it came. When it was a dry dock being stripped and painted. Okay, like I said, it was about to be scrapped when it came here. And that's what it looked like. Uh, it's kind of a mess. And this is what this diesel engine here looked like uh, when it was here before they redid the, uh, they redid it, cleaned it up and redid it. I wasn't here at the time, but they tell me that there was so much paint that uh, previous owners painted everything many, many times. So. Uh, there was so much paint on the uh, floor here in the deck that you couldn't really see the uh, diamond plate in some places. It had been painted over so many times. Uh, winch for, uh, for on the forward peak and the capstan, and also the um, uh, uh, steering mechanism up above the black chain. And then we have this diesel generator up here, which provides all the AC power for the um, lighting and instruments and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, then we have this, this is the electrical panel. I always check to make sure it's not hot. So we always want to check that out. Right? Uh, but back in the day, this would have been about 400 volts and the only thing between you and this bar was this bar. I don't think OSHA would go for that. DC? Hmm? DC or AC? I don't know. I don't think it matters if I'm to get fried. Yeah. It holds 50,000 gallons of number two diesel uh, and it burns about 90 gallons an hour. the diesel engines. Oh. So all the heat, you know, uh, it out and these aren't bad quarters for a boat, no. Yeah. I've been to captain quarters here.
Then look at the port on the second main port. You can see those chip, all those windows chips. <laughs> <laughs> you good there, Mom? <laughs> This is the captain's. They're not back for it, I think. Nope.